Board members, the boardroom is open and we're playing Hexplore It Volume 1 with Pepper Pants the Gnome Tinkersmith, Araya the Angelborn Guardian, and Thonk the Ogre Berserker as we campaign through the Valley of the Dead King. Board members, welcome back to the boardroom. The boardroom's open. It is time for us to continue our path as we make our way across the lands in search of boss number two. We did really well, if you remember the, uh, our first episode of this campaign. We took on, I believe it was, uh, the bandit prince, and we bested him. Um, Thonk really, really gave him a, a good whopping, being powered up by Pepper Pants' power bot ability here. We got some great upgrades to our stats, so we're looking pretty good. We have some six navigate, so I think we're going to just kick this one right off with, <clears throat> excuse me, making our way across the land. One of the things I'm excited about doing is getting on this river because when we move, heroes begin moving at a rate of four hexes per game turn. Um, normal may move only one hex or move your normal speed if following a river or a road. So if we follow this river, we can move cautiously at a speed of four hexes. One, two, three, four, and not have to roll crazy uh, exploration rolls. It's considered, um, it's considered cautious. So that's good. It's going to take us most of the way there. However, until then, until we get to the river here, we do have to move normal. So we're going to take a normal one, two, three move uh, to start this round. And see if we can successfully navigate that route. That being said, let's get moving. One, two, we may as well move four, three, four. We're gonna go right here to the crossroads. Now we could maybe go to this town here at the end of this turn. That's gonna be, which town is that? I thought I had the town placard. Oh, I do. It's Dragonsport, Baron Laswell. He runs that CD port. I don't know that I want to go deal with a CD port right now. I think we should make our way to boss number two and get some more great upgrades. So here we go. We moved four, one, two, three, four. Starting with Pepper Pants. Makes his checks. Let's see. Fails his navigate, but. Critical success. One critical success here on survival, which means we all regenerate one, I believe it is. We all regenerate one energy. Uh, each hero heals one lost energy. Well, that's going to take Thonk to full. And Pepper to two. And Orion to nine. That's nine. And a two. All right, let's see. Uh, he doesn't consume any food because he doesn't find any gold, but he does not find his way either. We're going to get lost this round. Oriya critically fails navigate, so we now are going to get lost. She finds no gold and she eats food, doesn't find any, scavenge any food. She did really, really terrible. Thonk. Thonk. He didn't get lost. He didn't find any gold and he does eat food because he was trying to tell them to go this way and they were all insisting on going a different way. One, two, three food consumed by Thonk. I think they all got hit in the head too hard by that boss, which is why they couldn't find their way. So, let us find out which direction they head. To the one, it's going to be back one. Oh well, not the worst thing in the world. Let's see if this is the worst thing in the world. We're going to take on one of the circumstances here. Number four is some shambling zombies. Nobody likes zombies, much less when they're shambling. They have 10 hit points and eight energy. Uh, let's take a look at their card here. All right, there is the, see that. There we go, shambling zombies. Okay, so the fight begins. Pepper only has, I gotta fix this, he only has two energy. He might start this off with a potion. Because we're just coming off of a boss fight. 
his potion will heal him three energy. But let's find out what happens here. They only have 10 hit points. Can Thonk hit him that hard? Um, let's take a look at what Thonk can dish out here to these 10 hit point zombies. He's got a seven basic attack, but if he were to rage for one energy, his rage damage would be nine. Um, does, let's see, rage is bash damage. You may sacrifice health up to twice range rank when using this mastery. Rage deals health damage to an opponent equal to bash rank plus rage rank. Seven, five, that's 12. So he could sacrifice none and deal 12 for one energy. He's going to do that. So he's going to go ahead and enrage, which gives him, oh, we heal one energy and one health at the end of every movement step because of our camp gear. Or at the beginning, one of the two. Either way, that puts him also at nine health, which is nice. Okay, now that that's settled, he's going to rage here. Uh, it takes one energy to do that. He's going to deal 12 damage to these 10 hit point zombies. Um, Pepper Pants is going to use automated defense. And Araya is going to use reflected assault. Costs two energy, taking her down to eight. Let's find out what the zombies are doing. Number one. Number one is dual target health. Reduce each target's damage dealt by three next round. Not this round, so they're going to die this round. Uh, dual target. So let's find out. Remember, blue is Berserker, green is Guardian. Berserker is one of the targets. Uh, the Guardian and Tinkersmith roll off. Again, roll off. And it's going to be the Guardian. Okay. So what we're going to do is it's four damage so she's going to reflect the four damage from Thonk uh, and it's going to not deal him any damage because she's reflecting nine of it she however does take the four damage from them taking her down to seven then we defeat them uh, it's, it's a little anticlimactic but again they're only level two and we have been powered up a little bit after that boss fight. So let's remove the dice out of the way. Thonk, thank you very much for your service. It's always appreciated when you kill everything for us. And we all get five gold as a group reward. So that's going to take his total to 13. At some point we're going to have to take all this gold to town and buy more upgrades, but for now we're going to keep making our way to the boss. 15 and 5 gold for Pepper Pants makes 11. No big deal. Moving right, right along. Love it. Okay, that was the circumstance phase in which we slay the zombies, so now it is the event phase. There is no event phase if we're out in the wild, so it takes us to the boss phase. That which is his villain phase, which is the Undead King. We're going to find out what his next target is. He doesn't move this round, which is nice. His target is city number four, way over here. That gives us quite some time. So we're going to put his target marker here to let us know that he's going to keep on clamber, but he's going to move at three starting next round because it's one movement per destroyed fallen city. It's okay. Give us some time. All right. Moving on to the next round. Movement phase. Uh, before the movement phase of each turn, we heal one health and one energy. So it's right now, because of camping gear, he's at 10 and full energy. Oriya is at uh, 8 health and 9 energy. Pepper Pants is at 4 energy and full health. Okay, we're going to move 4 along a river, 1, 2, 3, 4, which counts as cautious. So we don't have to roll sur uh, explore, I'm sorry, navigate. We roll explore and survival, starting with pepper pants. That's another crit. Critical success. Gonna heal everybody, heal one more energy. 
Pariah is full. Pepper is at five. Thonk is already full. But he found no gold. Oriah here. Found some gold. But she does have to consume food. She's down to three food. Uh, but found two more gold. She's at 17. I have to remind myself to get the my poker chips to use for their gold because it goes up and down so much. Thonk here is looking for threes or less. He doesn't eat food like he normally doesn't. However, he doesn't find any gold either. I think what happens is he's secretly finding gold, but then he's spending it on food. That makes way more sense to me than an ogre who never eats. Circumstance phase. We have to replace number four. It's distracted. It says, Affliction, you have stumbled into an arcane trap bearing the mark of the dead king. A powerful enchantment now plagues our minds. Are finding it difficult to concentrate. Instead of rolling all skill dice during the skill phase, each hero rolls only one and adds two to the result. It repl it, this applies to all three of their skills. This lasts for four game turns or until we rid ourselves of it. And then we must draw another card. So that's, it's not happening yet because we haven't rolled this. Um, we're about to roll Circumstance right now. If we roll that, that will happen, as will the next card. It's a hex, which means we get a random. A phase beast. A level 2 beast with 8 hit points and 10 energy. It is a spirit. Uh, do I fight against spirits? I do. Oriya has spirit as her favorite opponent. That's going to be fun. She deals an extra hex worth, uh, or six sider worth of damage. And that can hexplode, meaning if I roll a six, I get to roll it again and add that much more. So, we <laughs> normal deal here is Thonk is going to obliterate it for 12 damage out of the gate by using Rage. Um, Pepper Pants is going to use Automated Defense, and Araya, of course, will use her Reflected Assault. Now. This may seem like kind of, well, man, it's kind of boring. You're using the same things over and over. First, they work. Second, we're still really not strong enough to go take on big, big bosses. So we need to build up our, our gold intake and our experience to get these skills higher. So without further ado, Thonk is going to deal at 12. Let's see what the zombie, or is this phase beast does to us? Oh, Araya also is dealing three more because of favorite opponents. That's 15 damage we're dealing with a phase beast, just in case they defend some of it. Their attack on us is the Hex, which is usually the worst. Two damage, single target energy, and the first encounter drawn from the circumstance deck to the, add the circumstance deck to this battle. Wow. Okay, um, single target. Blue is Berserker, green is Guardian. Um, that's a one, it's a three, so green is guardian, is taking that. Uh, two energy damage, so she's down to six. Now reflected damage. The damage is defended, plus tower sh I'm... Hmm. Yeah, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I'm going to reflect it, of course, and deal it back so I'm still at eight killing the phase beast however what the phase beast really was is about to phase in from that deck and then they're dead so this is five gold for the group and then this <coughs> Ooh, hold one second okay it says add the next encounter drawn from the circumstance deck to this battle okay it's maimed the heroes have overexerted themselves attempting to cross dangerous terrain, roll the six-sided die, and each group member loses this amount of energy from their maximum pool. What, are you serious? Um, the loss is temporary, only lasts until this affliction is lifted. It remains for four game turns, or until you rid yourself of it. How do I rid myself of afflictions? Do potions do that? No. Do elixirs do that? No. Hmm, I bet you that's at a shrine. 
The shrines are found out in the wilds. <sighs> when we stood here, these should have been revealed. I'm just now noticing that. So let's do that. They were randomly drawn, so... And there's a shrine right there in the middle. And then... This one. Another shrine. Kind of not so much in the middle. I'm just having it to where the letters always face to me is north. So that there's kind of a semblance of, I don't know, fairness, if you will. Um, as opposed to me putting this as close to the border as possible when you are right there. Okay. Meanwhile, back at the maimed, it says draw one more card. Bandits have arrived to the scene. We have dealt with them before. We will deal with them again. They only have eight health. First, we have to deal with who's maimed, though. Who is the target of maim? I feel like I just rolled that. Don't remember? Here we go. Uh, it's not the Guardian. Oh, that was rolling the uh, Phase Beast. That's right. It's Pepper Pants is maimed. Ouch. Loses. Uh, oh, each group member loses this amount of energy. I was not paying attention to that. So that roll doesn't matter, but this roll does. Five. <laughs> so... Five takes this to three. Five takes him to zero. So I have an idea. And Thonk will have none. So here's what's going to happen. This round, um, Thonk is still going to bash for 7 damage. That's what he does. Right there. Then, oh boy, I am moving this board all over the place. Once again, this game takes up quite a bit of table space. Okay. Uh, Thonk is dealing 7. Oriah is going to use 2 more energy to Reflected Assault. So it takes her down to one. Pepper Pants is going to consume a potion and use automated defense. So one potion down. No, he's not going to do that. He's just going to use automated defense. He won't get the benefit from that. So just use the automated defense. Here goes. What is the? What are the bandits doing? Four. Single target energy drain. Well, that's fine. We don't have any. Pepper Pants. He's <laughs> draining pepper for none. Um, so if they drain energy and I don't have any, I better check the rule book on that. I really hope I... Well, I won't take the damage anyway because I'm reflecting assault. So I'm not going to look that up. Not going to use the time now to do that because I'm reflecting the assault. It's reflected back as piercing damage. Uh, so, this thing's taking a lot of damage. Eight from Reflected Assault, because she can reflect nine of it. Seven from him. Eight and seven's fifteen, thus killing them. Earning us one food each. Oh, I was in need of some of that. And then another four gold each. Seventeen. Oh, that's twenty-one. And 15. I'm going to take one quick second to grab those poker chips. Quickest second ever. I've got them. All right. Poker chips are had. Uh, let's just put them over here. 21. Fifteen for pepper. 
21 for Araya. And Thonk has 17. 10, 5, a couple of ones. Okay. Now I don't have to mess with erasing gold every single fight. One less task to undertake. All right. These are dead. Bye bye, bandits. Bye bye, phase beast. We, however, are maimed for four rounds unless we can get rid of it somehow. That is a bummer. Our energy is vastly depleted. Okay. Circumstance. Event. There's no event. However, the Un the dead king is on the move. One, two, three. Straight toward his goal here. And can we... I really wish we could go to town and remove our afflictions. I'm just checking out the market here. Uh, rations we can buy. We can heal ourselves. Camping gear. Exotic map, climbing gear, folding boat, reliable mounts, fortification plan. I'm just not seeing it. We do need to free a fallen city eventually. And we have to go to a shrine to get a talisman. So let's talk about freeing a falling city real, real quick, because if we don't start freeing them, when he gets all of these cities destroyed, we lose the game. Talismans are purchable, purchasable in shrines and are required to free a fallen city. When you enter a city, you must face the Dead King's lieutenants, which are down here, and the fallen townsfolk there battle the cards shown here. The talisman must be used each round of combat to counteract the Dead King's influence. You cannot harm this lieutenants unless it is used each round. Like other items, heroes may only use the talisman while defending. You may also pass the talisman to another hero in the same round you use it. This allows another hero to use it next round. Destroy the undead lieutenants. If you do, the city is freed from the dead king's influence for now. He can retarget it and, and go back, which would be really cool. Maybe that's the plan. We go ki kill number boss number two and then make our way to free this city while he's here, thus making him travel all the way back. Hopefully, he rolls that number, and if we can keep him walking far, I think that's part of the game. Ooh. Handy elixirs. Okay. All right. Here we go. Next round. We are once again moving. Um, we will heal one energy and one health prior to moving. Have no energy. So I have two energy. Pepper Pants will have one energy. I can't believe I rolled a five on that hex die for the energy loss for maimed. We're gonna move cautiously. One, two. We're gonna move cautiously. Can we defeat a level two boss while hurt? We're gonna move two, and then Araya's gonna drink a potion. She's gonna drink one of Pepper Pants' potions. So everybody has three. She's gonna be fully healed and fully energy. That's helpful. Um, hmm. Can we take it on with this affliction, which is lasting three more rounds? Only six out of die. Each group member loses that from their max pool. Okay. Three more rounds of this. Cautiously or get in there and fight. Let's get in here and fight. That's what this game is about. So one, two. We make our way to boss number two. So you know what that means. Boss fight. It's a boss fight. That's right. Let's take a look at who we're facing as boss number two. It's a gray slime, the slimiest of gray. 
This gray slime here is ugly, first of all, and it's gray. And here's what we here's what we know. Not much. Not much is known about the strange entity of the gray slime. It first welled up from the depths of the South Crown Cave several years ago. Many have tried to fell the monster, but none have returned. Tales are told of mounds of bone near its lair. It's able to alter its shape and color to mimic the environment. One can never be sure they're alone when they're near it. We know what we're looking for, but to be honest, it's been frustrating. The stories of this slime are either false or extremely accurate. Either way, this thing is nearly impossible to find. That is, until we came across a large pile of bleached and cracked bones. We look at each other and slightly decide maybe it's time to leave the cave. The light produced from the entrance is still visible. And escape from this horrific place is within sight. Unfortunately, as we turned to leave, the ceiling started to move and a terrible smell of sulfur filled our noses. And then a gelatinous creature dropped from the roof of the cave. We weren't expecting that at all. It blocked the exit and a body still digesting inside of it. With surprising speed, it lurched at us, eroding the rock beneath with an acidic burn. We have ourselves another boss fight. So here goes. It has 36 hit points, 25 energy. Attacks are known as corrosive slime, shifting form, engulfing, acidic spray, slimy osmosis, and caustic cloud. Um, anytime a hero is dealt damage by the gray slime, we suffer a minus two penalty to their defend and attack ranks. It may stack with itself and remains until the end of combat or until we use our defend ability. Defend may be used even if it's rank zero while affected by this passive ability. One thing I just now noticed is last time when we faced off the bandit prince, the bottom right corner you see a black market in, in this picture. We did not roll the, the die to see if we met up with Bezelquark, the vendor at the black market. So I'm gonna remember to do that this time around. But for now, we've got a couple of things to do. Um, I think Pepper Pants here, he's gotta do automated defense. Can't do power bot. I think I have to drink a potion with him. He's going to drink a potion and use his automated defense. That's what he's going to do. Thonk, of course, is just going to bash for seven. Um, can't use any of his... Well, he can use Endure. Oh, it, it automatically activates when I die in combat. I see. So that's not a thing. Um, if Rage is rank 5, I may choose to become the target of an individual attack this round. If I become targeted, my next attack becomes piercing and gains damage boost equal to Bash rank. Oh, wow. I didn't realize Rage was that good. It makes him attack me in the next round. I can, like, taunt him. Okay. Araya. Araya is going to use Reflected Assault. And that's going to be that. So, we're starting this off. Here, 36 health, 25 energy, just like so, and we know Thonk is dealing at 7, um, because Pepper didn't have the energy to help that out, but I have a plan, as I always do. What is the gray slime going to do to us? Let's take a look. That's a 3. 3 is engulf. Group health and explore. All right, everybody, let's explore. That's the yellow die. So we all need threes. Pepper. Critical success. Critical success. Mariah. Fails. Thonk. Fails. Okay. Group health and explore. The group is engulfed by the monstrous slime. Each hero suffers four health damage, and those who fail are now trapped. Okay. So we can dish out some damage real quick. Dealing none to Pepper because of Reflected Assault, which will reflect four onto the monster, which will then be minus four more. Four to Thonk takes him to seven. Four to Araya takes her to seven. Eleven to him takes him down to 25. 
Okay. Now that engulf cost four energy, so they're down to 21 energy. Now trapped. What does that mean? Sure, it's not good. Trapped heroes must succeed on an explore roll during the declaration phase of each round in order to act normally. If they fail, they may only defend. Wow. Um, how long are they trapped? Forever? Because they're stuck in his little belly and we're starting to get dissolved just like the other guy? Probably. At least Pepper Pants isn't trapped. Um, so let's start the declaration phase of the next round. Funk, we have to start with you because if you don't do what you gotta do, we are in some doo doo. It needs to get a three or less. It did say explore? Trap. Yep, explore roll. Okay, here goes. Three or less. Got a nine. He can only defend. Mariah. Five. She can only defend. Pepper. You can't attack. Like, you don't have any attacks. You're here to help other people attack. Uh, this isn't looking good. Hmm. I could. It's not going to help me. I was thinking I could use my gnome ability to raise his stat, his explore stat by two, then he would succeed. Um, for that, and then could hit him again. That still doesn't help us. So let's just let's just all defend for the next round. That all it says just the next round, right? Trap heroes must succeed on this. Uh, of each round. Oh, how do we become untrapped? Is there a is there a way to come untrapped? Every time a hero is dealt damage by the gray slime, they suffer a minus two to their defend and attack ranks. It remains until end of combat or until a hero uses... Oh, we're about to use defend, so there's that. Um, okay, we're all defending. That's what's happening. He has zero defense because it's minus two. She has two and he has one. Let's find out what the slime does here. Out of five... That's probably not good. Acidic spray. Dual target health. Let's see who's hitting. Um, that's going to be target rolls. It's going to hit blue and green. That's the berserker and the guardian. So... Piercing three. Oh, two targets suffer seven health damage. Oh, they're both at zero. Okay. I should have taken the safe road. Oh, seven. She took five uh, because she her, her defense was at two. So she's not dead. She took five of seven. She's at two. Um, Pep Prince took none because he wasn't part of that. Their skin blisters and bubbles burning as if they were touched by this fire. Okay. <clears throat> Thonk is... Thonk is down. What do I do about that? Uh, once per game turn for three energy. She has three energy. I may save myself or an ally who's just died. Healing the target's health equals my defend rank. Now my defend rank is... Two. <laughs> so he gets two health back. And I lose all my energy. Well, it beats dying. I suppose since I was defending, I should have drank a potion. I didn't think about that. But that is what happened. Okay. We are on the next round. Thonk is going to roll Explore. This time he's going to make it. He does make it. Araya is going to roll Explore, and this time she's going to make it. She doesn't make it. She has to defend at a minus two. Um, right, that's what... 
That's not what trap says. Where do I lose the minus two? Oh, it's any time a hero is dealt damage by the Great Slime, they suffer a minus two to their defend. This effect may stack and remains in the combat or until they use a defend ability. Okay, so they still both have minus two to attack and defense because they were dealt damage. Pepper Pants does not. Thonk is going to attack. Pepper Pants is going to use his uh, power bot enhancement to enhance that attack by five. It's going to hit for 12. We're going all out. Oh, wait, are we going all out or are we drinking a potion with Thonk and defending? Nope, going all out. Minus 12. Mariah has to guard at 2. Minus 2. Grace line. Hex. Group survival. The air grows foul, and heroes who fail are now diseased and fatigued until the end of combat. So group survival. Survival is blue. All right, so Pepper Pants has to get 4 or less. He's diseased and fatigued. Mariah is diseased and fatigued, and Thon is not. Let's take a look at disease and fatigue. Boy, this guy's a mess of conditions. If we want to use energy, we must first succeed on a survival roll in order to rid yourself of the condition. We must heal in a location that provides healing, a city or a shrine. Fatigue, we lose one energy at the beginning of the declaration phase of each round of combat. Well, we don't have any energy, so there's that. Uh, so disease and fatigue really didn't hurt us at all. None of us have any of this. So the good news is he dealt us no damage. All of those minus twos are gone. We dealt him uh, 12, so he's down to 13. So the hex was probably the best thing we could have got, as crazy as that sounds. Um, we should... Well, we should try to escape, but we're not going to. We're going to fight, because the fight is worth fighting. So let's everybody fight. Seven from the Berserker, three from the Guardian, one from Pepper Pants. That is 11 damage. And we just gotta hope for the best. And is that smart? No. But three defense doesn't really help me any with Pepper. Okay, yes it does. Pepper is just going to defend That's it. So now let's find out what the slime is doing. Roll the hex again. I'll take it. Uh, that is nothing to us because we're already all disease and fatigue. But 10 damage to the boss who now has three left. And we will do that same thing again. Bash for seven. Um, and four. Okay, only Thonk is going to bash. Araya and Pepper Pants are going to defend. So he's going to lose seven this round. If, worst case scenario, if he defends, um, if he gets shifting form, which is a two, he'll defend four of it and still die, and Thonk will take two damage. Uh, it's energy at that, so he'll take nothing because he didn't have it. Um, if he rolls a hex, he dies. So we have two and a hex. We have a 33% chance of just winning outright or losing 66% chance of losing outright. <laughs> I guess those are both true. Here goes. It's a five. I'm sure we're all dead. Uh, dual target health. Piercing three. Oh, piercing three. That's a bummer. It's going to ignore my defense. It's going to ignore four of her defense. Dual target health. Let's see who gets hit with this. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna not lose though. It's five um, five more energy. We're down to sixteen energy. Can't just keep using these big attacks. Let's see who gets hit with this. It is blue and yellow, which is the berserker and pepper. Pepper takes seven health damage. Um, 
The skin blood. Okay. Piercing three. So it ignores three of my defense. I only had three defense. So he takes seven. He is down to zero. Uh, Thonk takes seven. He is down to zero. Right? It is blue berserker. Yes, he is down to zero. However, the boss has been vanquished. So, that being said, we have to figure out what to do with these heroes. I believe her special ability, Araya's, once per game turn for three energy, you may save yourself for an ally who has just died. Uh, healing the target. So I don't have any energy. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is drink a potion with her. Get three health and three energy back. So I'm on five health and three energy. Now, let's go to this diseased and... Diseased heroes who wish to use energy must first succeed on survival roll in order to reduce. Okay, that's that. Fatigue. Fatigue. Lose one energy beacon of declaration phase each round of combat. So this is gone now. Fatigue is gone, but disease is not. So she has to roll survival to use energy. Well, that's the event phase. Hold on. We have a couple things to do. First, we beat the boss. Let's take a look at the rewards. I'm getting ahead and behind myself. Um, rewards are two survival and two luck stones. So, since I know I can revive my heroes with the angel, I'm just gonna, still going to roll these to see who gets what. Green, Guardian, gets two survival. Goes to six. And then the luck stones go to Thonk. Luck. One, two. Okay. The next rewards are six gold each. So that's going to be. We'll uh, give Thonk ten. Take back a five. Give him one. Six more to Pepper. Put eleven there, increasing his to twenty-one. And six more. Increasing hers to 27. Okay. Then we get two card draws. Um, we'll just use the same here. Green Guardian first. Plus two to my choice. Um, well, knowing that it's my defend rank, Reflected Assault also helps. So I'm going to put one in defend rank. Make that a five. And then I'm going to up my explore to four. Okay. Second card. Plus one attack and plus one defense. Well, that's good. It's four and six. Okay, we'll take the boss pick off of there. Let's go to... Berserker. First one. Plus one attack. Plus one first mastery. Eight and six. That's good. They're all good. Second card. Plus two energy. He actually needed that. Um, he had three, five. He still has zero. But I'm going to make a note here. He has five, but while this is here, he has zero because these are minus five. Okay. Um, get rid of the battle mat. That's over. Pepper Pants. First thing. Plus one attack and plus one second mastery, which is Power Bot. Oh, that. Oh, wow, those stack. So two and five. So instead, now this is boosting by seven. Excellent. 
and plus two, explore. And pretty well rounded out for his skills, six, five, four. Then we roll for the black market. Now I didn't do that last time, I'm gonna do it this time. Let's take a look. If I can find Bezel Quark. Where you at, Bezel Quark? Hmm. There he is. Bezel Quark's Black Market. Uh, cannot be targeted by the Dead King, but is considered additional city. You may heal, turn in quests, and purchase all items normally available in the market, as well as the more lucrative items below. Okay. Um, after I defeat a boss, I count the number of bosses I've defeated and roll the 10-sided die. It's rolled once per hero, and if I roll that number or lower, the black market opens on our space. How exciting. Okay. Starting with Pepper. A two or a one will open the black market. Critical success. And it's open. Just like that. Let's take a look at Diesel Quark's market. We can buy a health stone. Automatically heals three health when your hero reaches one or less remaining health, then crumbles to dust. Troll's blood. Regen, a ridiculous amount. An adrenaline booster, a dryad's amulet. Um, this amulet may be used once every three combat rounds during the resolution phase of combat. After conditions are applied, it use, it, its use negates all ongoing conditions for the wielder. Revival ritual. Well, that's something we need. Um, right now for 12 gold. Um, this may only be used outside of combat, may only be used once. So what we're going to do is let me read the rest of these. Celerity Potion allows a single hero to act twice in one round. Using it costs 5 health. Wow. Uptar's Withered Tongue Sometimes the only way to silence an orc is to feed them something they shouldn't be eating. Uptar learned the hard way. Allows a single hero to treat every foe as a favorite opponent. Holy smokes. Which, speaking of favorite opponent, magical nature. That was one of Pepper's favorite opponents. I should have been rolling extra damage every round. Um, I gotta remember to look at that. A bone bowl. Shaman's tool increases the group's favorite opponent die from a 6 to a 10 sided die. It hex explodes on a result of a hex and a 10, and we only carry one for the group, but it's, it works for the entire group. A stave of dragons. This potent scaled stave grants power over lesser dragons. Locate the young dragon, circumstance, place it in your hand. Once one hero may spend four energy to summon it before movement phase of your turn. It doubles your movement speed this turn and fights for you in combat. It becomes a target and acts against your foes. Roll the six sided die to determine some actions each round. Wow. That stuff is really good, and I have the money to buy some of that. Um, hmm. So I think I need to start by reviving Thonk for 12, 10, 11, 12. So, Thonk, you're back. And you have 12 less gold. You don't know why. And you don't know why you're standing in front of a gnome named Bezel Quark. I then will use Araya's ability to save an ally who's just died, Pepper Pants. And they get health equal to my defend rank, which is 6. So he's almost fully alive. He's got 6 out of 7 health. Okay. Now, let's talk about some of these amazing permanent things. Uptar's Withered Tongue. Sometimes the only way to silence an orc. Okay, I think for 18 gold, Pepper Pants is going to buy Uptar's Withered Tongue and give it to Funk. Only one available per game and allows a single hero to treat every foe as a favorite opponent. 
Ook, tar, tongue. At all costs, Fonk must live. Um, where was the thing that boosts our... It's the Bone Bowl. Eight per hero. Um, do we have 24 gold among us all? The Shaman's Tool increases the favorite opponent die from a 6 to a 10. This die explodes as a result of a hex or a 10. The group may only carry one. Eight per hero, so we need 24 gold. I don't think we should keep spending money on these beautiful things. We need health and we need to get rid of this affliction and other things. So maybe we'll deal that with that next time we see Bezel Quark. All right, we're going to leave Bezel Quark's Black Market right where it is. And journey on towards this city right here. All right, that was the event phase. Very eventful. Now it is the villain phase. One, two, three. He's just making his way straight to this city. One, two, three. Two more turns, he's going to get there. So on our turn, I would like to move straight one, two, three, four to this city and get that disease taken care of. Oh, that takes care of this. Two more rounds of being maimed. So let's move towards this city. Boss number three is way over here, but I think we need to go to this city, upgrade our stuff, go over here and revive this fallen city. Oh, we need to find a shrine to do that. Shrines are on the outskirts, which I neglected to go to this shrine when we were already over here. But that's the way it goes. Let us move this way. We heal one energy. Uh, he has none. Pepper has two available. So we heal one energy before we and one health, right? That's what camping gear does. Where's my store? Camping gear, one health and one energy. So, six and one, one and full. If we land on it, we are there, safe and sound. Here goes, Pepper Pants, make your skill rolls. Critical, Critical success. success on Navigate, which means we automatically get there if I remember correctly. We save the group from wandering this turn. Beautifully done. And we heal another energy because of his... Um, no, that wasn't a critical success. We don't heal another energy because of that. He just doesn't eat food. Finds no gold. Okay. Not worried about green anymore. Just looking for yellow and blue. Succeeds finding gold. That's two more gold for Araya. However, she's eating some food. It's a hungry, hungry angel. Gotta tell ya. Funk, you ought to show her like how you stay so slim. There is two. Critical success. Critical success is out of thought. Critical success. That is a critical success for food, which does heal an energy for the entire group. Now they have two. And he has none, of course, um, because of this weighing him down. He doesn't eat, and he also helped us get there, but it finds no gold. All right, we've arrived in a town, and this town is a great town. Take a look at this town. It is called... where are my cities? This one is Restwind Dale. Walking into this peaceful city feels just like walking back into your childhood home. The halfling folk here are inviting and don't really care much for the news of the outside world. We're shocked to find that most have not even heard of the Dead King. 
The humble magistrate Aremi does her best to make you feel welcome and introduces you to the quiet life of her people. Excellent food, ale, and fantastic stories abound at local taverns, allowing you to forget the troubles of the outside world, if only for a brief moment. You pray this place may remain untouched by the decay outside, that their quaint town will never know the might of the Bone Legion. The thought propels you forward. You can't stay long, but there is work to be done. So that's cool. We found ourselves a little um, happy town. Going to see what they have to offer. They have, I think they have a list of what all the cities have to offer. Yes. We may purchase luck stones here for one gold instead of the normal price, which is two gold. You can use this to reroll any one die outside of combat or discard it to redraw up to three open circumstances or quests. Okay. Well, in cities, I know we can... Uh, the group may choose to pay one gold to heal all lost health and energy while in a city. So the group may pay... One gold total. So that's coming out of Moneybags Araya here. We are all fully healed energy and health. Okay. Also, the disease affliction is gone. Uh, this is coming off this turn. We still got to deal with this. Affliction is lifted. Does it? Hmm. We can turn in Aremi's ring, by the way. We just met Aremi. Um, if you keep the ring, the group may use it once. You may turn this in for a bounty of four gold per hero, or you may keep the magical ring. If you do keep it, we may use it once before a single combat round. Uh, let's turn it in. We're that kind of people. Aremi, we found your ring, and we're going to give it to you. And Aremi is so happy that she gives us each five gold, but takes one back. Five gold takes one back. Five gold takes one back. Okay. We have... Now we have plenty of gold to spend. What we got to do now, and I think this is where I'm going to call it after we're doing done doing this, is we're just going to buy our upgrades, like our, what they're called gear upgrades, which is all of our stats and uh, abilities. So why don't we go ahead and do that? I think about hmm. Now the question is, what do I want to do with Thonk? I mean, are we just gonna go all out and damage? I mean, that's what he does. That's how kind of he. How he rolls. Hmm. I think so. So, no defense. These skills are also really good to purchase. And he only has 15 to spend. So it's not like he can do a whole bunch of things. But I think, I think he needs to spend some time on rage, or money I should say, rage is four, seven, four, seven, he's got eight more to spend, they're there, yep, let's do it, four for rage, four for navigate, four for survival, and three for explore, that's 15, that's what we're going to do, so I'm going to update his right now, um, So Rage goes up to 7, costs 4 gold. Navigate goes, everything goes to 4 on the bottom row. And his gold is spent. He just got, oh, his Rage now. Doing this times 2. Um, he can suffer 14 damage now for his rage if he wants to. 8 and 7 is 15. His rage damage is now 15. He could do a total of um, 12, 
Well, he took a total of 27 if he sacrifices all but one of his life. That would be nuts. If he did that and she shielded him from the damage, that would be crazy. Um, that being said, let me take a look at what I want to do with Araya in regards to that variability. Um, she's looking good here. Could look better. She has a lot of gold to spend. She's got 27. Are there any other items we want to buy from the market? That's the other question. Regular old item items. I think the handy elixir is awesome for three gold. It's a regen, three health, and three energy for three rounds of combat. Um, that's definitely something that we need as a group. I think she's going to spend three for that. There's five, two back. And she's going to give that to Pepper. Andy, elixir. Okay. I guess I could have just wrote elixir because I don't see another one. Um... She needs to spend two gold on two food, because she's always eating food. Might as well keep her filled up there. Another potion. Uh, she will get a potion for Pepper, so that they always have three each. Um, now her stats. I really feel like her shield could go up cheaply. That's four. Now the shield is up to seven. That costs four. Her damage is lacking. Also costs four. I'll put this 20. 16 back. Five. Damage of five. Okay. I really wish I knew how to deal with this affliction. I just don't get it. Um, she'll spend three here to make her navigate a seven. So I'll take her five and put two back. Some really good, she's getting really good stats down here below. She needs to spend five to get two more energy. Takes her up to seven right now with this affliction. It's kind of nice. It's a lot of energy. She's with nine. What can she spend for like four? Do like Shield ally. Let's do it. I never use it. Why don't I? There's a reason I never use it. I'll have to look it up. But she she should probably boost it. Or boost explore. Let's boost explore. For now. Since I never use shield ally, I'm going to try to read it and see. Or I'm going to read it and see what it does and see if I can make some use of it. It leaves her with five gold to spend. Pepper has seven. Now, he's got some good stats, but he's lacking in the energy department. So he's going to spend two of it for energy and three of it for hit points. Gives him eight. And he's got two left to spend. And Thonk spent all of his. Okay. In the city, event, spend your gold, turn in quest, pay one gold to heal completely. Okay. That is that. That's going to wrap up episode two. We've defeated the gray slime. We've shopped at Bezel Quark's Black Market. Got uh, Thonk here. Uktar's tongue revived Thonk from the dead, actually, um, and then handed him Uktar's tongue. 
Hopefully he'll, he'll make good use of that. We still have one more round of affliction left. Before we go, we do have to end this round with the Dead King movement. One, two, three. One step or three steps closer to city number four. And that will be disastrous once he starts taking off from there. Uh, that's going to be three cities destroyed. He's going to start moving four hexes a turn. Cannot let that happen. We got to get on the move on and start helping out these towns. I think what the plan's going to be is we make our way here to this, <coughs> excuse me, to this shrine, or hopefully there's a shrine here. That's a good question. Do we bank on this being a shrine? We could travel one, two, three, four along the river safely. One, two, three, four along the river safely. Like start making our way to this. We know there's a shrine here. And then maybe save this fallen city. Oh boy, oh boy. Because if there's no shrine here, well, we have to make those decisions. So that's part of the game, right? That's going to wrap up this episode number two. Again, Gray Slime Dead, Bezel Quark Shop helped us out. Araya's Angelborn ability helped us out. We're using a lot of our abilities to our advantage. It's great. Love the game. Thanks so much for watching here on the live stream. If you were here, I appreciate that. If you're checking this out on the YouTube replay, please consider giving it a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more episodes. Thanks again for watching, and as always, we'll see you at the next boardroom meeting.